I'm going to show you how to do this candy apple red finish with black grain filler. Some things you'll need to do this finish, I'm doing this all in nitrocellulose, some nitro sander sealer, some nitro inca silver undercoat, some translucent red, that gives you the candy finish because you can see through the red to the silver underneath, some nitro gloss, and then we need things like water-based black grain filler. I'll put a link to all of these in the description, all the things I use. You'll also need some wire brushes. I'll put a link to these in the description. These help open up the grain just so the finish is more apparent. You'll need a load of sandpaper, sort of all the grits up to about 400, and some wet and dry paper from about 400 to about 3,000. The first thing you're gonna to want to do to your guitar body is sand the entire thing to 400 grit all over. So maybe work up from about 120, then 240, 360, and I go to about 400. Then get your wire brushes and work them in line with the grain, so along the grain, just to open that up. Once you finish with the wire brushes, go over the whole body again with some 400 grit sandpaper. Then you want your sander sealer. You want two or three coats of this. Now wear a full face mask, I'll put a link to mine in the description, because this stuff can make you feel quite ill. And I'd go about 20 minutes to an hour between coats, depending on the temperature. Also, you don't want it to be too humid or that can cause can cause problems with the finish, so it can go a bit misty. You can bring it back from that, we'll go into that later. But two or three coats of that, and then I'd leave it for 24 hours to dry. The next day I'd go over the body with some 1000 grit wet and dry paper, I do use it wet. Wipe off all the excess moisture with some paper towel. And then I'd get some Inca Silver Spray, so nitrocellulose again. And again, I'd do two or three, to be honest, I'd do three or four coats. And what I tend to do is do two coats, at 20 minutes or an hour between coats depending on the temperature. Then after that second coat, leave it quite a long time to dry and I'd give it an, probably a 1000 grit or an 800 grit all over just to make sure there's no imperfections. Wipe that off with paper towel and then go another two coats. So you can do about three or four coats in a day and after that, leave it another 24 hours to dry. Now the next day, you're gonna start preparing for the grain filler. You're not gonna use this quite yet. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go over the entire body with a couple of coats of gloss nitrocellulose. Leave that to dry for a good period of time, maybe a few hours, and then wet and dry paper over it at about a thousand grit just to remove imperfections. Then maybe one more coat. And what that does, that seals the Inca Silver so that when you go over it with this, you don't scratch all the, Inca, the Inca Silver off. Just gives it a bit of protection. And I did, I asked Brad Angove how to do that and that was his advice. And I've got to be honest, it worked perfectly. The next day, that's your filler day. So everything's been sealed in. What you're gonna do is use a plastic filling knife. I'll put a link in the description. This is all from Amazon pretty much. And then just push it into the grain as best as possible. You can use your fingers. That does help just really push it into the grain. Get rid of a bit of the excess, but leave a bit there. And then leave it a period of time to dry. That just lets it set within there. And then I use the filling knife to remove as much as possible, but don't scratch the finish, just go easy. and. I've I tried a few things with this, so I did some experimental pieces. I've seen people use sort of kitchen towel with oil and rags. I used wet and dry paper, sort of start at about 2000 grit, and just go easy and just remove it. So you've just got the black grain filler and you're not, you don't want to wear through that clear coat to the Inca Silver. I worked down to about 1000 grit, you just got to go easy, you don't want to take that finish if you don't want to remove that Inca Silver. And then if I'm being honest, I'd leave it a day or two to dry because you don't want this to be wet underneath the final coats. When you're sure the grain filler is dry, now it's time for your candy apple red. So get your candy apple red, do a couple of coats, as always, about half an hour to an hour between coats. And after two, leave it an extra hour or two, wet and dry to about a thousand, just to remove any imperfections and then do another couple of coats. I wouldn't really do more than two a day. I've done six in a day before, but the temperature was right. I'd, I'd go easy, I'd go, I'd go about four coats in a day. And I don't like to sand that final coat. I like to do it the coat or two coats before the final coat. So do two coats, sand it to a thousand, do two more coats, leave it for a day. The final day, I mean, it probably looks fine as it is, but I would do three or four coats of gloss finish. Again, two coats, give it a wet and dry, at about 1500, 2000 grit, and then another coat. And you're pretty much done then. I'd leave it three or four weeks to dry though, so you've got to leave it hanging up in a place where there's not gonna be any problems. What some of the problems I have found with spraying with nitrocellulose, if you come in the next day or that evening, it's gone all milky, there's too much moisture in the air. And you, what you have to do is wait a day, wait for it to dry, go over it with some wet and dry paper, about a thousand grit, paper towel, remove all that moisture, give it an hour just to make sure all that moisture has evaporated, and then go over with whatever that last coat was, and that sets the finish off and triggers it all again. I think I had that, I've had it on quite a few guitars actually, I say quite a few, about three that I've done with Nitro. You can bring it back, just don't panic. 
It's just one of the things that can go wrong with it. Obviously, this is a finished guitar, so I'm gonna take you through the rest of this. This is a Crimson Guitars neck. It's got an ebony fretboard, maple back. So I sanded down the neck to about 400 grit, and then went over the entire back of the neck with some Crimson Guitar Stunning Stains. I went with some black, sanded that back down just a bit, and then went over the whole thing with a couple of coats of red. And this is all satin nitrocellulose. This is all from, is it Northwest Guitars? I like this stuff, these and Dartfords, but these Northwest Guitars guys, they do the Candy Apple Red kit with the bright colors, and they do the sounder seal. That's just easy to get it from the same place. You can get them from eBay and Amazon. Really nice finish, it feels amazing. Nice satin finish. I did try a different Candy Apple Red on the headstock, so with non-nitro, so your normal spray paint. So I went silver, then a the translucent red, it doesn't look like candy apple red, so I wouldn't recommend that at all. I might put links in the description just so you know what not to buy, but this, this looks fantastic. Finishing touches, we've got a Wilkinson bridge, good quality electrics, and I fitted some Fender Custom Shop Fat 50s pickups just because they sound awesome. This has got an ebony fretboard, and to make it look incredible, what I do to every fretboard at the moment is use this Monty's Instrument Food. It's 16 pounds, and I've used it on ebony, I've used it on laurel. Laurel's, laurel was the most surprising because it just made it look absolutely incredible. I could not believe how good it looked on laurel. Rosewood obviously looks great, but also I was surprised that it made ebony look so good, just because ebony's sort of dark and a bit waxy feeling, but it just, I could not believe how good it ended up looking. So I'm actually using this on, if I'm being honest, every dark fretboard that I own. 16 pounds, get a tin of it, use it on every fretboard. And there you go, a Candy Apple Red guitar with black grain filler. Looks absolutely fantastic. In fact, there's a chip there, so I've obviously taken the uh, clear cut and the red off and you can see the silver beneath it. It looks amazing. Get some good comments. Look at it in the light. What an amazing guitar. It, it honestly looks wonderful. I no longer have the Fender Custom Shop Fat 50s pickups in this guitar. I've changed it for some others. We did a single coil shootout, the video's here. And the reason being, <laughs> I discovered that most high-end pickups sound the same and some of the ones I've had just sort of in a cupboard for years happen to sound absolutely fantastic. So it's quite a good video to find out what single coils sound good and why. Thank you for watching.